Hey there, today we're talking about the Sony ZV-E1, the new rumored camera that has been generating a lot of buzz in the photography and videography community. So what is the ZV-E1? Well, to start, it's a mouthful, but more specifically, it is a rumored new camera from Sony that is said to be specifically designed for content creators. It's believed to be a hybrid camera that combines some of the features of Sony's ever popular A7S III, along with some new features aimed at making it easier to create content. So says the rumors on the internet. So let's dive into each of these rumors and talk about their possible likelihood. The first rumor is that the specs are based off of the A7S III. When I read that this would be based on the A7S III, I was not shocked and more excited. The A7S III is the perfect camera if you can get around the low megapixel count of 12. The files are plenty big enough and you can take photos for days on any card you put into it compared to the A7IV, A7R5, or the A1. It is truly the best base camera to build off of, and we may see yet another great version of it in the ZV-E1. There's a reason they keep building off of this camera with the likes of the FX3, the FX6, and kind of the A1 in some ways, and now the ZV-E1, if the rumors are true. It's just so versatile. With the same ISO options as the A7S III, you just really can't go wrong. The second rumor is the autofocus system. This is one of the most exciting rumored features of the ZV-E1, is its autofocus system. It's believed that this camera will have an advanced autofocus system from the A7R5, but it has even better detection that will make it easy to track moving subjects and ensure that your shots are always in focus. My thought on this is a maybe. We haven't seen this new AF system in any other Sony camera yet, and the ZV-E1 being based on the A7S III, I would say that they may upgrade the AF, but not to the AI version in this specific model. It takes a lot of processing power for that system to work, and it would make this camera more expensive and heat up a lot over heat. But what do you think of that statement? Leave a comment down below and tell me what you think about that one. And the next rumor is that it's gonna have 4K60 and 4K 120 internally in this camera. This would make sense as it's based on the A7S III in a different form, and the A7S III has both of those frame rates in it. I will say, however, that in a smaller body, you will get a ton of overheating without a fan. I overheat my A7S III all the time when I'm shooting high frame rate in heat or even in cool temperatures. If I'm doing a lot of slow-mo clips in a row, I will get overheat shut down most of the time. I can only imagine what the limits of this camera would be. They will need a fan in it or a very large heat sink because it will heat up fast for sure, shooting at those frame rates. So another rumor is the body style. I have heard several things about the rumored body style. I've heard that we're gonna have a ZV-1 type camera and then a ZV-E10 type camera, which is interchangeable. So if it's a ZV-1 type camera and we have an, uh, a fixed lens, you know, like basically a lens that comes out and then retracts when you turn it off or uh, an interchangeable lens mount where you can install your own lenses onto it. I would say that for this video, I'm gonna go with the ZV-1 because I think that's really exciting. But I think overall, it would probably be more of a ZV-E10 type of camera. That that camera didn't do so well. So I don't know their thought process on that. I know that the ZV-1 did a lot better. A lot of people bought that camera. And we'll go more into price down below of these two. But let's just for this sake of this video, talk like it's gonna be the ZV-1 type camera in the A7C size. Let's just go down that road. And my take on that is, it's interesting. A ZV-1 bigger like the A7C, but with A7S III specs. I mean, what world are we living in? That's an awesome camera. That'd be pretty cool. That's like the epitome of what I'd wanna take on a trip or something with me. It's something small, semi-compact, you can slip in your, in your pocket. You know, it has an internal lens already on it. I love the simplicity of the ZV-1. It has so much going for it, and the Sony ZV-E1 is expected to have a compact and lightweight design just like the ZV-1, making it easy to take with you wherever you go. Compact size, great built-in focal length with a decent aperture. This body type will be something new for Sony, and I really do think this will be a great option for travel and small projects that you don't need to take multiple lenses and such. My biggest question is what focal length range do you think they'll put on it if it is a fixed lens camera? Do they go with the 24 to 70 f2.8 like on the ZV-1 equivalent? 
would it would that would probably be the most likely option. But what if they do a 24 to 105 f4 on it? I mean, stay with me for a second. With that higher ISO range, you could get away with f4, and then you have a great wide angle to short telephoto lens built into the camera. I think that's the move, personally. What do you think? Let me know down below. It is also rumored to have the same flip out screen as the ZV-1 and other Sony cameras to date. A bigger back wheel, a red record button on top of the camera, and the windscreen from the ZV-1 also. What will be interesting is if they include a mic jack or an HDMI port. I think a full size HDMI port on this camera would be awesome as you could kit it out in the future for a external monitor or something like that. I think this would be a great cheaper option for a B camera down the road. This one, I just, I, I'm making this one up a little bit, but built in ND. I keep going back to this. I, I want it so bad on one of these types of cameras. Now with the ZV-1, we had built in ND and now it was just a stop or a half a stop, but it always helped out a little bit. Having that built in was great. I would hope they would keep that with this camera as shooting at 12,800 ISO at F8 to F11 and a 1.5 stop and D would be great spot for people out in the world if you're outside or something. More is always better, but you can get away with that setting with built-in ND. Keep the noise down by being at that second base ISO and stopping down the aperture is where it's at. Now more is always better, but you could get away with that setting with built-in ND. Keep the noise down by being at that second base ISO and stopping the aperture down is where it's at instead of shooting at 6400 or 8000 ISO. And the base ISO of 640 can just be a little bit too low sometimes to capture the whole scene. So let's just count it as it's a feature in the ZV-1. And this is the ZV line, so internal ND is here. I'm stamping it. Best feature of them all. The ZV-E1 is going to have internal ND. I don't know that for sure, that's just my speculation. All right, last but not least, the price. The rumor is that this is gonna be at or below 2,500. My take, this is a great price for this camera. I think this is a great price for this camera, but a far cry away from the very reasonable price of $750 for the ZV-1. This is a steep jump, and I'm not saying it's not worth the $2,500 price tag, I just think this camera is meant to be a stopgap to the a7 IV, which is the same price. I mean, really though, which one are you gonna get? The 24 megapixel full frame interchangeable lens camera or a 12 megapixel plastic lens built in camera that gives you a lot. The 24 megapixel full frame interchangeable lens camera or a 12 megapixel plastic lens built in camera that gives a lot up on the user experience side of things. I would go for the a7 IV if they're the same price. But if this camera was $1,200, $1,500, $1,799, I would think more about going with this option as it has a ton to offer the new content creator when it comes to photo and video. It is getting harder and harder to separate people from their money and Sony is coming up with great equipment to do so. All right, so this is a recap of the rumors floating around the internet on the ZV-E1. And overall, the Sony ZV-E1 looks like an incredibly exciting new camera that could be a game changer for content creators. While we don't have all the details yet, the rumors we heard so far suggest that this could be one of the most exciting cameras of the year, maybe. But stay tuned for more updates on the Sony ZV-E1 as we learn more. And uh, make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you'd like to, maybe subscribe if you haven't. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you got something from this and we'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.